I'm Dale Cox for Two Egg TV, and we are here near Lake Seminole in Jackson County, Florida. We are searching for the ghost town of Butler, Florida. Butler was a village that existed here in the 1800s and the first half of the 1900s or 20th century. It was the location of a turpentine operation, a sawmill. There was a farm there called the Butler Plantation, and it was also the location of a, uh, of a riverboat landing on the Chattahoochee River. Most people today know it from Butler Road which passes through Jackson County, but to find it, you have to go in search of the original or the old Butler Road, and we found it. We're here in the Appalachian Wildlife Management Area, and if you look behind me here, you will see the original route or the original path of this original Old Butler Road. This road, we know from maps, was in existence all the way back into the 1820s, so this is a very old roadway that runs here uh, near Lake Seminole. Okay, now we've moved over, as you can see, to today's Butler Road, and west of this point, which is the direction behind me, uh, it still follows pretty much its original route or its original pathway that it has followed since at least the early 1800s. It may have been there even earlier than that. Uh, this road could have been a Creek Indian or Seminole Indian trail going back centuries before the arrival of uh, the first settlers in this region. But if you follow me around, you'll see, as we showed you a moment ago, that this trail actually uh, went straight ahead, but today's road veers off to the south. And we're looking towards the east now, towards Lake Seminole. Uh, and the uh, Butler house stood directly behind me here. We spoke with Dylan Kilpatrick, who once lived in that house when he was a young man back in the 1940s. And he said that Butler Road today passes right through the center of what would have been the Butler house. The day that I left to go to Colville was right sitting on the porch of the house I was over there. Right. And when I come back, it took me 13 months to get back, right. actually, because I had all that traveling time, you see. Right. And, uh, and then when I come back, all of this was tore down, and they'd already moved it up the mile, up the road here. And that's where I went to the house then, the same house. A mile up here. Now some of these ponds that you see here in the Butler area are original. If you look out across this one, you can see what were probably the original banks of this pond. You see the oak tree uh, out there uh, that has died and such. Um, some of these ponds were original. Some were created by uh, the building of Lake Seminole. Uh, and uh, some, like this one, were enlarged when Lake Seminole was created. It's a very, very pretty spot. This is part of the Appalachian Wildlife Management Area today. It's a state operated uh, management area along the shores of Lake Seminole. Uh, it's very popular during hunting season, but it's also known as a great place to come and look at waterfowl like ducks and geese and things like that. So Butler today still draws people just for a different reason than it originally did. Now we are here in downtown Butler. We've moved up Butler Road just a little bit to what was the center of this community. And from where we're standing here at the intersection of Butler Road and River Road, you can see a lot of the site of this historic community. If you look back this way, you will see some uh, oak trees and other types of trees in the distance there. Those surround what was called a dip vat. And dip vats were places where back in the days of uh, free roaming livestock, before you were required by law to keep your livestock in a pen, people would have to bring their uh, cattle and other livestock in once a year or twice a year and have it dipped. That was to keep the ticks and other things off of it to prevent diseases in livestock. Uh, dip vats uh, are very uh, hazardous today because of the type of materials they used in them to, uh, you know, get the ticks off of livestock. And uh, unfortunately, in many rural areas of the state, there are dip vats all over the place, including there's one right here on state land that have never been cleaned up. So if you find one of them, they look kind of like a uh, just a trench dug out in the woods. You know, be careful around it. Don't play in the dirt around it too much. There's no telling what, what you may dig up there. And then the big the uh, mule barn and all was sitting this away, and that barn was. And then uh, there's a dipping vat out there. We use the dipping vat. Is it under the lake now, or still? No, up? it's on. It's out there where them bushes are. Oh, <laughs> that side of that tree, the last tree you see there. Oh, look. I figured it. All, I thought they just took all them up. I mean, you know, <laughs> but that's still there. 
Now the center of activity in Butler was the Butler store. And if you look over this way, you'll see kind of a, a solo tree standing out here. And then the store was over on the other side of that tree. Uh, the side is uh, now partially underwater over there. And the old Butler Road, the original road, ran in that line of trees behind it. And then of course you'll see the store building. And it run, the road run right on, right in front up here. It faced Butler Road? No, it faced this way. Okay. It faced north, uh, the opening was to the south. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it was built out of a special block that was built, made right there on the side. And they're bigger than the regular block. Huh. <laughs> they were about 24 inches long. Now, was it, still run, was it still operating then or had it closed? It had closed. Everything, it, this, it had shut down entirely. Entirely, but we uh, had to re-roof it. My, I remember my brother re-roofing it. He was a good carpenter. And anyway, he uh, they re-roofed it, and we opened up a little old store for a while, and then shut it down. So you ran the last store in Butler. We did, right? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. and, and then, of course, that road there led to the ferry now. Now we've moved on to another section of the old Butler Road. If you look behind me, you see this road running east off into the woods there. This is a surviving section of the road that ran from the little community of Butler down to the Butler Riverboat Landing down on the Chattahoochee River. Uh, the landing had uh, what they called a warehouse. It was really kind of a shed where you could store cotton and other cargo for the boats to pick up. It's also a place where paddle wheel boats like the John W. Callahan, the W.C. Bradley, and the John W. Callahan Jr. would nudge up to the bank uh, to pick up cargo or uh, let people get on and off. And that old barge is, st is still in the old lake. I mean, in the river. Oh, is it really? Yes, sir. But you don't see it. You can't see it or nothing. It's underneath? The, it's underneath, yes, sir. It's still right there. It was sunk whenever we come here. All right, the gin pond, what they call the gin pond, a little round pond here. Mm -hmm. There was a gin, cotton gin, grist mill, and like I said on there that I can't rem remember seeing any place that resembled a sawmill. But now there was turpentine still on the riverbank. Now not too far down this road is a grove of trees. And those trees uh, are, mark the location of the Robinson Cemetery. And you can't have life in a community without also having death in a community. We don't know much about the story of the Robinson Cemetery. Its uh, history was not recorded. There was never a survey done or a census done of the graves that are located there. And in fact, not even a single marker remains today. But we know from old maps of Jackson County and of this area that that's where it was located. It was marked as far back as the 1930s as an African-American cemetery. Uh, we believe, and local tradition holds, that it dates on back to slavery times uh, and to the Reconstruction era, but we don't know that for sure. And it's a shame we don't know more about this old cemetery, but it's still there uh, without a marker, uh, just you know, a grove of trees to uh, remind us that people lived here before us. If you'd like to learn more about the community of Butler or many other places along Lake Seminole, just visit our website at tueg.tv or visit our sister website, exploresouthernhistory.com. In Butler, Florida, I'm Dale Cox for Tueg TV.